I was born and raised in Riga, Latvia. Germans occupied Riga the first week. 8,000 Jews were killed. And uh, then we went to the ghetto, Riga, where I was for two years. And then came the action. Mother was killed, brother and sister, seven years old. And the biggest part of the family. It was the day of my birth, tomorrow, the 8th of December, 1941. Memory Reconstruction is an exhibit about Holocaust survivors and their stories. The object of the exhibit was for Holocaust survivors to get together and bring with them pictures and documents and any kind of memorabilia they might have had around wartime before, during, or after the war. And then sit with their family members, hopefully children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and assemble a visual vignette of their life in, in the format of a collage. Having grown up with a, a father who was an artist, art was exposed to me all my life. I also had a passion for science and medicine. I wanted to become a doctor since I was 10 years old. So I've struggled my whole life with this art, medicine, art, science kind of thing. I began working as a graphic designer and I did so for nearly 30 years. And then at some point, both of our boys were on their way to medical school. When they applied to medical school, I applied. And then we all went to medical school and we graduated in 2012 and 13. But at the same time, I still loved my art. So when I would study and I would look at pictures of electron microscopy in my head, I was always saying, this could be a great painting. And so the art and the science never really separated. So what are we adding the red? Okay, you're gonna go do it right now. I just wanted to wash the yellow now, just let the yellow go down into here. My dad and I started working together and we're, we're painting, which I find to be a very amazing thing to do with my dad because he starts telling me a lot more about his life that I never knew. And this was the motivation for this project. He started to tell me about being in the orphanage. He started to talk about his parents. He started to talk about the people he knew who maybe had passed away or he'd start telling me stories. And maybe the next week when he would come, he'd bring me some photographs. He'd start showing me pictures of his, of his brother and his sister and his mom and his dad. I got to thinking that, you know, this was such an extraordinary experience for me, that it would be such a wonderful experience for other second generation and even third generation survivors would have the opportunity to have this experience that I have in the studio with my dad all the time. This is my daughter, Elizabeth. It is her daughter and my grandchild, Leah. And it is her two sons, you know, he will be soon. Next year he will be bar mitzvah. When I was a child, all I knew that my father went through concentration camp and survived. I never knew any details. We lived 20 minutes away from the house he lived in. He never showed us the house. To have an opportunity to sit together with my children and have him tell stories of these, these locations I was just in, trying to piece together the story. So it's really a gift to, to have that opportunity to look at pictures together. I'm really fascinated by the periodic table. There's an order and a form to every single element. So when I built the first one for the USC exhibition, I also built a smaller version, which is what you see behind me. Sometimes it's very hard to draw the parallel between the science of the periodic table and the art that I'm doing, but the really important piece that makes it cohesive is the human element. And it, I think it so appropriately fits right in the middle of the periodic table because without those physical elements we wouldn't be and without the human element we wouldn't be. Where's the roof line of Auschwitz? College? It's at the tear. I mean according the to that. The first tear. Okay, put a little red on the bottom but just lightly. Don't, the don't centerpiece go. is a combination of digital art and mixed media. I took several images that I thought were very powerful. The third one being this beautiful image of this young girl who just happened to be my father's first love, Ruth Keller, 
I created a print of a piece and I wanted to tear the print apart and I wanted to put it back together because I wanted it to be a metaphor for the tearing apart of someone's life and the reassembly of their life. I'm going to need a hundred word message from you. I asked each participant to take a pen and to write a prayer. Write it as, as you speaking to your grandchildren and your children if you want. And I took all of those and I composed them together and so I just typed one prayer after another into a continuous stream of prayers. The prayers go from the top over Ruth's face and down to the bottom of the star. And then that will be the breaking point where the, the words stop and a wonderful artist, Donnie Silver Simon's markings begin. When I told her about the project, she was so excited and she said, I want to participate any way I can. Donnie does these incredible markings and I thought what an amazing thing it would be for her to incorporate those marks into a portion of this painting because it's the perfect metaphor for time passing. I work with time, memory, and identity. These marks that are applied to this image, for me, they're, they're twofold. They're marks of time, and I think this is a way of tallying the event. I'm holding my breath while you make the marks. I'm praying. When I developed the idea for this project, Memory Reconstruction, I put together a presentation and I thought of the Museum of Tolerance. When Laurie Shockert came to the Museum of Tolerance and told us about the intriguing project that she was working on, it immediately captivated my attention and my fascination. They loved it and they were passionate about wanting to make it happen. The priest of the village told the um, inhabitants that if they saved a Jew, they would go to heaven. So the village only had 240 families and they hid 42 children in that one village. So the survivors and their family members came to the workshops and sat with the materials they brought to assemble a collage. The collages were built on a 10 by 10 panel that looks like this. This is the finished collage of one of our survivors. Once the collage is assembled, then I take their essay and then combine it together into what ultimately looks like an element on the periodic table. So their entire collage is being shown and at the same time their story is on the bottom. Each element in this exhibit is colorized by the country in which the participant was from. And we had together 129 survivors from 14 different countries. On my website, when you go to a survivor's page, you'll be able to see the collage that they did in, in my workshop. And then you'll be able to click on a link that will take you to the Shoah Foundation, and it will take you to hear more of the story of that particular survivor. My vision is that I would like to see every remaining Holocaust survivor or every second generation child of a survivor to participate in this project. I have great hope that's what the future of this project will be.